Thank you so much for the introduction and the opportunity to present here. Uh, my name is Madeline. Um, I'm really excited to share some data that I collected while I was a postdoc in the Merritt Lab at the OHSU School of Dentistry. So today I'm going to share a sto short story about how Fusobacterium nucleatum subspecies exhibit oral niche specific biases and tell you why I think that these bacterial subspecies should be reclassified at the species level. One second. All right. So if you're not familiar with Fusobacterium nucleatum, they are a gram-negative negative filamentous commensal bacterial species that is found as a normal member of the human microflora. So within a biofilm architecture, they will form these really cool looking spaghetti type structures and actually act as a physical bridge for other bacterial species. Traditionally, we have classified F. nucleatum into four different subspecies groups. So these are Fn nucleatum, Fn polymorphum, Fn vincenti, and Fn animalis. Although F. nucleatum is a commensal, elevated levels of this bacterial species have been associated with numerous systemic diseases, including periodontitis in the oral cavity, colorectal cancer in the GI tract, and cardiovascular disease. Historically, research has lumped all of these subspecies together and just assumed that they are physiologically identical. And when we need to move into the lab and use one of these subspecies as a laboratory workhorse strain, we have chosen F. nucleatum uh, isolates. However, recent research has suggested that not all subspecies are created equal. And in particular, F. N. animalis has been most commonly isolated from colorectal cancer tumors and other sites of disease across the body. So all of this research arose from some interesting qualitative observations that we made while developing a fusobacterial genotyping approach. So our lab had a library of paired patient plaque and abscess samples that were stored away in the minus 80. And we wanted to be able to genotype F. nucleatum strains as well as fusobacterium periodonticum isolates from the oral cavity. So we developed a culture-dependent approach using subspecies-specific PCR primers in order to accomplish this. So I have a gel illustrated on this slide, and we can see that using this mix of primers with either individual isolates from these subspecies or a mixture of subspecies results in unique, uniquely sized bands that will run out differently on a DNA gel. So we can detect which combination of isolates are in a culture without the need for Sanger sequencing. Of course, this just gives us binary data so we can just detect the presence or absence of these subspecies within a culture. So when we looked at all of this data um, in, in total, we didn't see anything super surprising. So the distribution of these subspecies looked really homogeneous across our plaque and abscess samples. However, this is not what we were seeing while we were actually conducting these experiments. So when we'd go to plate these clinical samples out for isolation, we noticed that there were a lot more FN animalis colonies popping up on those abscess plates and a lot more polymorphum colonies appearing on the plaque. And then we realized that there was a really fundamental gap in F nucleatum literature. So we know that F. nucleatum is associated with oral diseases, but we don't know the specific subspecies of F. nucleatum that may contribute to this disease formation. And fundamentally, the subspecies distribution of F. nucleatum in the oral cavity is completely unknown. So we wanted to see if F. nucleatum subspecies were heterogeneously distributed across oral plaque and abscess samples, and if so, which subspecies predominated the inflammatory and diseased sites of the abscess. So in order to do this, I developed a quantitative novel next generation sequencing based identification method for F nucleatum. So this is actually a culture independent approach. We can isolate GDNA directly from clinical samples and then sequence a hypervariable zinc protease gene with a MySeq. So this is a much more variable region um, than the traditionally used 16S E3V4 region. And we actually observed the exact same pattern that we had qualitatively uh, noticed with our previous results. So the, the bias for polymorphum, which is illustrated in the yellow bars on this slide, um, 
is dominates the plaque. So we can see a lot more polymorphism in our collection of plaque samples. However, when we look at the abscess, that bias shifts towards animalis, which is in blue. And I actually developed a second uh, quantitative approach to uh, quantitate the amount of these subspecies using qPCR and was able to reproduce the re average relative abundance graphs with this qPCR validation almost exactly to compare with our NGS sequencing data. So we have a lot of confidence in this approach. So we found that the distribution of F nucleatum subspecies within oral samples was heterogeneous and that FN animalis dominated the diseased abscess sites, which is a trend that we had that has been observed in colorectal cancer and other systemic diseases. It's also important to note that FN nucleatum was the least prevalent or one of the least prevalent subspecies we detected. However, everybody uses FN nucleatum as their laboratory workhorse strain. However, it consistently appears to be the least clinically relevant subspecies. So this led us to a million dollar question that might shake up the field of F nucleatum biology. We wanted to see if there was phylogenetic and genomic evidence for species level reclassification of, of these uh, F nucleatum subspecies to better guide future research. So I did a pan genome analysis using the ANVIO platform. I utilized full genome sequences available on NCBI from these different subspecies and other closely related fusobacterial species. And then I built a phylogenetic tree based on single copy core genes. And we can see that all of the isolates from these different subspecies group in a really close monophyletic nature, which is very classic of speciation. And we even see a separate species of fusobacteria called F. canophellium in red here, that is grouping in between FN polymorphum and FN nucleatum subspecies. So furthermore, I did an average, um, average nucleotide identity analysis, which compares the whole genome similarity of all of these subspecies groups and found that the inter subspecies variation fell well below the established speciation threshold of 95 to 96%. So finally, I wanted to see if there were any unique virulence mechanisms that might be encoded within FN, FN animalis genomes that might hint um, give us a hint on why they are seem to be so virulence associated. At the top most interesting contender that we found from a functional enrichment analysis was this FAO AB iron transport system. So this is a transport system that is found in many pathogenic bacterial species and helps with iron acquisition in inflammatory environments. So why is all of this important? It appears that FN animalis is the most relevant and informative subspecies to study since it is the most prevalent in disease sites and appears to have unique pathogenic mechanisms. So I have shown you that F nucleatum subspecies are heterogeneously distributed across oral plaque and abscess samples and that FN animalis shows a clear preference for abscess sites. I also showed clear genomic, phylogenetic, and clinical evidence that F. nucleatum subspecies should be recategorized into separate species in order to better guide future research. So my take home message from this is that in order to conduct the most clinically relevant investigations, we should be utilizing strains of FN animalis instead of FN nucleatum in our laboratory research. So to sum everything up, I would like to provide a few acknowledgements. Again, this work was done in the Merit Lab in the OHSU School of Dentistry. Um, Yasser was a scientist who did the foundational PCR assay work um, that everything else was built on. And I want to also give a shout out to our collaborators at the University of Washington in the McLean Lab. And my email address is available on the top right of this slide. Um, if there's any other fusobacterial enthusiasts who want to chat more in depth later about this work. So thank you so much.